Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. In today's video, we will continue the deconstruction from last time. This time we will set up the CSS for this cool effect. But before we do that, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Okay, so what we'll be recreating in this tutorial is this mask hover effect. Okay, so firstly, we'll need to create two layers, one with the original text, one with the light version, and then we'll use the clip path to animate it all in React and CSS. We'll start with a simple React app, running the create React app, and the main element that we'll be focusing on is this title container that for now includes title wrapper and H1. Okay, what we want to do, we want to duplicate this, and create a clone with a different class. Okay, so we'll have two elements. One will be the lighter version sitting on top of the darker version, and then we'll use clip path. Okay, so we'll need two of these elements. We'll give this one extra additional class, the clone wrapper, and we'll change it to position absolute, and we'll change the color of it too. Okay, so these two elements will do the trick for us, and inside of the VS Code, I've got the app running, created this title component and passing it CSS hover mask, but this could be any text. And the title component itself, it's a class component that renders the HTML that we've just seen in the browser. And we are rendering the text pass through the props. Okay, so this is a basic overview of how the two components are linked together. And then inside of the app, dot s css will be writing our css now let's jump to the title js and we will duplicate the title wrapper we'll copy it right after and for the second one we'll use clone wrapper as an additional class to it and now we need to position it on top of the first one so let's come into the style sheet we'll use the clone wrapper and we will position it absolute this will make it sitting on top of the lighter version so we need to or darker version so we need to also change the color and i'll paste the lighter color color from my notes and if we save both files and have a look at it inside of a browser we should see the two sitting on top of each other but the problem is we did not set position relative to the title container okay so at the moment position relative is nowhere or it's on the body by default that's why this absolute position element is not sitting where we want we want it to be relative to this element so we need to set position relative on the title container. So let's go in here and add it to title container. Okay. Now we've got the two elements sitting on top of each other, lighter version on top and the darker behind it. Okay. So if I hide this, we've got the darker version under. Okay. Now we'll add the clip path to the lighter version and then we'll use the JavaScript mouse event to move it and reveal the text behind it if you remember from last video i showed you the clippy application or web app that shows you how the clip path works and we can copy the code from here okay so our default values will be 0 and 50 so 50 will be the yellow one and green one will be sitting on zero so this clip path polygon is what we want to copy and paste it inside of our clone wrapper. Okay, so if we leave this on, it will be clipped and should look exactly like our example here. And as you can see, there is our zero and here is about 50% of our element. So we've used the default values zero and 50 and because we will want to animate the styles on this title container so anytime we are hovering over these 
we want to read the values from the title container, we will use custom variables. Okay, so on the title container, we will create two new CSS variables. Mask X will be zero and mask Y will be 50. And then we'll reuse these two inside of our clip path. Okay, later on, we'll use JavaScript to change these two values and the clip path will be then automatically recalculated. Now let's replace these variables. So the first zero will be var mask x and the other one will be mask y. Now we are reusing the two variables from here inside of the polygon. But the problem is we have only uh, the number zero and 50. And what we want to do, we want to convert this into a percentage. Okay, to define a polygon, we need to specify percentage. And for that, we will wrap this in a calc. So we'll calculate this and we'll multiply it by 1%. And this will give us 0% in this case, but in the other case, it will be 50%. Okay, so times 1 should now convert these two values into percentage and we'll, we should see the same numbers in the browser or the same shape in the browser as before. So if I refresh it, clone and why this one is not converting. So mask x times 1% and mask y times 1% person. Okay, so I forgot the percent after the second number one. And when I put it in, we see the shape as before. So I need to go back and put the percentage sign here. Otherwise, the 50 is not converted into a percentage. Okay, so that's why the polygon didn't work. But with that fix in place, we are seeing the right shape. And all we have to do now is to get to the JavaScript part of the tutorial. And we will want to get the current location of the mouse wherever we are on this title container. And we'll be updating these two values. Okay, so if we keep updating them now, you see how the shape is changing. And we want to do that when, oops, we want to do that when we are moving the mouse on the element. We will be nicely revealing the light and dark backgrounds. Okay, so now it gets even more technical. Now we jump into the React and mouse events and detecting the mouse position. So let's get into it. And that's it all for today. Hope you've enjoying this walkthrough from deconstruction to CSS to JavaScript. If you are, don't forget to smash the like button subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video where we'll do the interactivity inside of our react app until then happy coding